I'm making this video to apologize. Because I fucked up. Because I'm embarrassed and ashamed. Because I lied. And I misled a lot of people. And I dug myself into a bigger and deeper hole. I have only myself to blame. Lever King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message. What was this message he was talking about? And who was really behind this experiment? Something from the start seemed off. We're supposed to believe this guy was looking like this from swallowing testicles and his ancestral lifestyle. And anyone who suggested steroids were aggressively shut down. So this is what I say to people that make this accusation. Um, if you don't believe this is possible, then I suggest that you take that self-limiting belief, you put that shit in a fucking box. But the masterminds behind the liver king got exactly what they wanted. This is a cautionary tale for all influencers, marketers, and followers. What ultimately drove Brian to become the liver king came from a tender place. He observed the declining mental and physical health of humanity, with modernization being the problem. People are no longer as happy. When you get an illness or problem, the common response is to take a drug or to buy something to treat the symptoms instead of the root cause of the issue. This is something that affected him closely. My son Rad got sick and uh, we, thought we, we thought we were losing him. He lost his bind. You know, uh, there's something called PANDAS. It stands for uh, Pediatric Autoimmune Neuro Neurological Disorder, something like that. PANDAS can lead to the manifestation of obsessive thoughts. And one day he said, um, I wish I had a baseball bat because I would rather hit my brain and do damage to this brain than to live with this brain. You know, my wife and I just, uh, we, uh, we, we were crying on each other because we thought we lost them. You know, when you read about the prognosis with, with kiddos, with, with pandas, um, it's not good. You know, and again, it's like the best you could do is give them enough medication to sedate them uh, enough to take that edge off. In the desperation to cure their son, they reached out to Paul Saladino, the carnivore MD, a leading advocate for the carnivore diet and its health benefits. And I said, hey man, what's going on? What's going on here? And he said, oh my God, you guys are still eating 100% cacao chocolate and raw honey every day. Take that out of his diet. And then he got better in like three or four days. This ancestral way of living was Brian's simple, elegant solution to much of the world's suffering. And he had one mission, to spread the message which meant so much to him at all costs. I really appreciate you for who you are. And the second thing is, Happy birthday! We really hope that you're still alive by the time you get this message. Happy birthday, Ed. I believe one day that guy broke out, Liver King. And I always say this, he ate Brian Johnson. What was brewing was a perfect storm. Social media platforms were about to start prioritizing short form content and his video ideas were extreme enough to spread like wildfire. I'm gonna take a huge bite out of these testicles. The negatives of the modern world are something we're all aware of. Such a simple solution to a complex problem was perfect. And for those who agreed with his message, but didn't enjoy organs and eyeballs, he sold supplements which would help fund his mission. I don't care what it's costing, but this is what we're gonna do. If we can mitigate some of that cost, hey, that's cool too. So after sending some emails which would come back to haunt him, the Liver King had the perfect formula for social media success. He uploaded his Y video and the experiment would fully begin. The first time I heard about the Liver King was through the many video requests I received. I thought it was obvious what was going on, but it couldn't be proved. What really seemed peculiar to me was the marketing. Despite Brian's caveman persona, it was almost too perfect. Let me show you. Made to Stick provides a framework for how things go viral. The Liver King was able to absolutely nail every element and achieve success. His message was simple, or simple and elegant, as he puts it. Unexpected. Why would you eat a vegetable when you can devour a testicle? Concrete, with his nine caveman-proof tenants. Incredible, just look at his physique, it clearly works. As for stories, his origin sounds like the start of a superhero film. The Liver King had the foundations to become insanely viral. All that was left to do was to start pumping out the content. Within months of the Liver King eating Brian, he was everywhere. From UFC events to YouTube collaborations. This is Liver King. What up, primals? You couldn't even watch the news coverage around the death of the queen without seeing a red bearded man curling weights. 
Whether or not people were just trying to make him look bad, everyone was talking about him. Oh no, this guy's gonna die so early. No! Oh, hell no! By far, the biggest focus of discussion was whether or not he was natural. I mean, steroids aren't very primal, right? That is not a natural body. Of course it's not. That guy is shooting all kinds of shit into his system to achieve that kind of physique. Unless you're just a shade of red for no reason. Hmm. Is it possible that he is natural and I'm just a hater? Yes, I suppose it's possible. It's also possible that there is a teacup orbiting Saturn. However, attention is the greatest gift. Okay, that wasn't marketing theory, it was just the Christmas card I'm reading out. But the Liver King seemed to revel in the attention. Derek for a more plates, more dates does a thing on Liver King. My guess is no, I think this guy is fucking saucy. One of the greatest days of my life. He single-handedly launched me out of obscurity. The Liver King was playing the social media game to perfection. Joe Rogan made a pretty interesting statement on his show. The Liver King thing drives me nuts because <laughs> that guy's on steroids. Well, Just shut the fuck up. I couldn't be more grateful that he's talking about me. Joe Rogan said, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. I've entered his ecosystem. Of course, his denial of PED use only invoked more curiosity, which resulted in more attention. Natty or not. <laughs> oh my God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> never taken steroids. I've never done PEDs other than prioritize, execute, and dominate. I stack liver and bone marrow every day. You think if I was on steroids, I would have these fucking appendages down here, these legs? The best part was nobody could prove otherwise. So we'd wind up those who questioned him. There's a lot of uh, subprimals that are convinced that Liver King is taking steroids. Steroids, primal or subprimal? Subprimal. This was the strategy. Maximize attention at all costs and spread the message. Any PR is good PR. Little did he know, his antics would irritate the people he sent those emails to, which he seemed to have forgotten about. For now, the Liver King seemed untouchable, and I wanted to know who was really behind this character. Something always seemed peculiar. From the community building language. What up, primal? Primal, primal. primal. Liver King here. Because liver is king. To the carefully crafted social media growth strategy. It seemed like this was too much of a coincidence to not be the works of some of the most effective marketers in the world. But he almost seemed reluctant to be an influencer, like it was just a necessary evil to spread his message. I, I never had an intention of going to doing social media. Part of the reason why I never wanted to publicly come out as the liver king is because I've been completely terrified of public speaking. Liver king here to take over London! Yeah! As proud as I am about how quickly he got over his shy phase, this contradicts the first revelation in the leaked emails. His goal from the start was 1 million followers in less than a year. You see, Brian Johnson was a successful businessman before the Liver King, allegedly making $5.2 million a year when he was only 25. He had the funds and vision to collaborate with 1DS Collective, a social media marketing agency with the mission to become a social media sensation from scratch. They specialize in snackable media, social amplification, and attracting global audiences in niche markets. Primal pest control. Everything from the brand identity and design to management and strategy was carefully orchestrated. Their insanely effective growth strategy enabled Liver King to gain 5.5 million followers in only a year. And like that, the mission was complete. But you see, with such a polarizing brand, many were patiently waiting for the cracks to form and proof of his dishonest facade was already being assembled in the background. Vigorous Steve knew what was really going on. He was a bodybuilding coach Brian had sent emails to for coaching. I gave Derek permission to use these emails in a redacted form to help Brian, AKA the Liver King, finally come clean and end the lies dead in their tracks. Derek had already questioned his credibility and had a wider audience which he could spread this message to. To me, this guy, you know, definitely gives off a pretty saucy vibe. And I would guess on Natty. The first email revealed his current steroid cycle consisted of seven different compounds, indicating Brian was spending $11,000 a month on subprimal activities. For the last one and a half years, I've been sitting on the sideline, biting my lip, watching the lie get worse and worse and worse and turn into a lie of its own. After receiving this information, 
Derek, who's also respected for his PED knowledge, came across some more evidence. The other day I was filtering through my emails and I came across an unread email from May 2021. The email appeared to be from the man himself, asking for a consultation. He states he wants to reach the next level with his physique, taking on the trope or human growth hormone. Another email from someone on the Liver King team was uncovered, this time displaying concerns with how the Liver King was responding to the drugs he was taking. They wanted a device. Instead of advice, Brian was sent a humbling with the Liver King lie, a brilliantly presented expose, which was immediately met with a flood of reactions. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh -huh. This is probably the least shocking news you've ever heard. Uh -huh. Who would have thought, dude? The whole time? Who would have thought? Messages for the Liver King. You. You almost had me. I've been watching your videos for over a year now. Eating liver, eating testicles, not showering, not wiping when you sh Jokes aside, it was headline news, and he had let down many. Um, he's a good human at his core, and I'm incredibly disappointed by the steroid revelations. But was this not all a necessary evil to spread his message? The Liver King had one last chance to save face if he wanted to stick around. So after sitting in his humble throne, he has to film a raw apology video. Primals, I'm making this video to apologize because I fucked up. Because I'm embarrassed and ashamed. Because I lied. Not a bad start. However, the message once more became his justification. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves. Was this experiment really helping here? Or was he just adding to the self-esteem issues by creating an impossible to replicate image? Selling that you could be just like him without steroids. If you want to be a top king, if you want unlimited access to cars, money, and if you want to find your queen, then you have to fuel your efforts with ancestral supplements, liver, beef organs, and bone marrow with breakfast, lunch, and dinner because liver is king. The comments under the video all agreed this felt more like damage control. How much of his story was genuine? And was this revelation all part of a strategy? Charlatan was the label who is given, a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill, often for the sake of profit. The red flags are clear. However, if we give Brian the benefit of doubt and assume his intentions are pure, after all, none of his fans are ever going to see him as a charlatan, then zealot is an undeniably fair term. A person who is fanatical and uncompromising in pursuit of religious, political or other ideals. Now, you can be extremely passionate about a topic and a great marketer without being a zealot. A zealot makes definitive claims from limited research. If you sun your balls, there is a study, it's an older study, I think it's from like the 50s or 60s, um, that mm. shows that it does improve androgens. I think it's pretty f***ing primal. So sun your balls. Sun your balls. Perfect. Speaks in absolutes. We got veggie tofu. Subprimal, 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 subprimal. The epitome, the king of subprimal. Promotes one specific way to get results while holding tightly to an opinion even in the face of evidence. Why would you ever eat a vegetable? I'm looking for a serious response. The fact is, a diet of raw testicles is never gonna suit everyone. The primal people have some fucking good points, but the good points can be summarized with excising the primal bullshit altogether and just saying the following. Do healthy shit. The Liver King's uncompromising pursuit to spread his message, whatever that really is, is what drove him to sacrifice his credibility and it's why he's not made to stick. At least not for good reasons. I don't touch the stuff, not gonna touch the stuff, I never touch the stuff. We all tell ourselves stories, very rarely do we see ourselves as the bad guy. No influence is perfect and mistakes are pretty ancestral. However, honesty, or at least not dishonesty, needs to be a prerequisite. When the Liver King apologised, people wanted to hear from Brian, the successful businessman with an ultimately positive message. I honestly believe Brian could have been much more successful in spreading his message without being deceptive and forcefully polarizing. You see, it's possible to become a viral fitness influencer while being open about your PED usage like Noel. It's possible to spread an extremely positive health message without steroids like Hampton. So wouldn't you say it's feasible to do things without sacrificing honesty and credibility? If you don't believe this is possible, then I suggest that you take that self-limiting belief, you put that shit in a fucking box and you bury that next to all your embarrassing shit 
and don't open your fucking mouth about it, let, let that live with you. <laughs>